Coming up on Arirang News, North Korea launches another round of short-range missiles. The South Korean Joint Chiefs of Staff are looking into whether they were ballistic missiles, which would be a violation of UN Security Council resolutions. South Korean lawmakers passed the extra budget needed to fund the upcoming fourth round of pandemic relief payments to small businesses. Thousands of dollars each to go out to the businesses hardest hit. And new rules take effect in South Korea on cryptocurrencies. Local exchanges will have to file detailed records with regulators to prevent money laundering, but it could be too big of a burden for some smaller exchanges, which may have to fold. It's 5 o'clock p.m. here in Seoul. Thanks for tuning in to Arirang News. I'm Devin Whiting. We start with the latest provocation by North Korea. The South Korean military says the North fired two short-range missiles into the East Sea this morning. The Joint Chiefs of Staff are looking at whether they were ballistic missiles, which would be a violation of UN Security Council resolutions. Kim ji Un reports. South Korea's Joint Chiefs of Staff said North Korea on Thursday fired two short-range missiles into the East Sea from the northeastern town of Hamju. The missiles were launched consecutively some 19 minutes apart. They flew about 450 kilometers and reached an altitude of some 60 kilometers. The South Korean military identified two short-range missiles fired from North Korea's Hamju at around 7.06 a.m. and 7.25 a.m. on Thursday. The military is maintaining its readiness posture while closely monitoring related moves. The Joint Chiefs did not deny or confirm whether they're ballistic missiles, but said it's considering the possibility that they could be ballistic missiles. If it's confirmed that the missiles are ballistic, it means the North has violated U.N. Security Council resolutions for the first time since U.S. President Joe Biden took office. The last time North Korea had fired ballistic missiles was a year ago. South Korean military sources say the recent missiles have been fired using transported erected launchers, which make them harder to detect and intercept since they could be launched from anywhere instead of just from launch sites. Sources also say there is a possibility that North Korean leader Kim Jong-un was present for the latest test fire. Observers say the launches signify that the North is ready to gradually raise tensions with the U.S. and as provocative acts could be further exacerbated by Washington's nonchalant response. On Sunday, the regime fired two cruise missiles into the West Sea, but the U.S. shrugged those off as business as usual, with President Biden saying nothing much had changed. Kim Jong-un, Anirang News. South Korea's National Security Council has expressed concern over the North's missile launches, especially at a time when the U.S. is mapping out its new North Korea policy. The NSC convened an emergency meeting this morning shortly after the military confirmed the launch to review the security situation on the peninsula. After a 90-minute session, the NSC said that the military and intel authorities of Seoul and Washington will work closely together to analyze the missiles and that it will also coordinate with related parties to discern the North's intentions. The meeting was chaired by National Security Advisor So Hun and attended by related officials, including the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff and the chief of the National Intelligence Service. The foreign ministers of South Korea and Russia met today for talks on bilateral and regional issues and afterwards held a press conference. The South Korean foreign minister expressed deep concern about North Korea's missile launches, while his Russian counterpart urged all parties concerned to stop escalating military activities of all kinds. Yoon Jung-min reports. South Korea's Foreign Minister Chung eun yong expressed deep concerns about North Korea's latest missile launches at a joint press conference Thursday with his Russian counterpart. As agreed between the leaders of the two Koreas in September 2018, we urged the North to continue to join our efforts to make the Korean Peninsula free of nuclear weapons and nuclear threats. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov called for the resumption of negotiations with relevant countries as soon as possible to resolve regional issues while urging what he called all related countries to stop the escalation of military activities of all kinds. Chung added that Seoul and Moscow have agreed to continue to work together on the Korean peace process. Also discussed was a future visit to South Korea by the Russian president. We have reaffirmed South Korea's invitation of President Vladimir Putin. We have decided to discuss the issue once the COVID-19 situation gets under control. 
The two sides have agreed to further cooperate in nine key sectors, including energy, transport, shipbuilding, and healthcare, as part of South Korea's new northern policy. They plan to continue to working together to sign a bilateral free trade agreement on services and investment. Other area for cooperation includes the fight against the pandemic and the development and supply of vaccines. Also, the two ministers signed a document aimed at boosting bilateral exchanges. Marking 30 years of Seoul-Moscow ties, the two sides expect to further increase exchanges in a range of sectors, including politics, the economy and culture. Yoon Jong-min, Arirang News. South Korean lawmakers have passed the extra budget needed to fund the upcoming round of pandemic relief funds. This will be the fourth round of payments, this time mainly for freelancers and small businesses. And the budget to fund it is worth 15 trillion won, or about 13 billion dollars. Hong Yu reports. The supplementary budget bill to be used for a fourth round of COVID-19 emergency relief has been passed by the National Assembly on Thursday. The amount is the same as what the government initially proposed, clocking in at more than 13 billion U.S. dollars. But it took some time for the ruling Democratic and the main opposition People Power Party to come to an agreement. More than $7 billion have been allocated to support those affected by COVID-19, more than $2 billion for employment measures, and more than $3 billion for disease prevention measures, such as the purchase of vaccines. A major adjustment from the initial proposal are changes aimed at making sure the budget helps as many groups as possible that have been affected by COVID-19. Almost half of the budget will be used to help small business owners and entrepreneurs, but the amount set aside for employment measures has been reduced. Support for farmers and fishermen who are struggling due to the drop in consumption has also increased by $200 million. $100 million more has been allocated to help those whose jobs are most vulnerable to the impact of the pandemic, such as rental bus drivers whose income has dropped due to a decline in demand. Businesses in the culture, tourism and sports sectors will receive almost $50 million more from what was initially proposed. The Education Ministry was also assigned $100 million through the extra budget to be used for disease prevention efforts. That will be used to provide 10,000 more staff to schools in an effort to prevent the spread of the virus, as well as hire a total of 4,000 online tutors for 4th to ninth graders, provide substitute workers for special needs schools, and give more scholarships for university students whose parents are struggling economically due to the pandemic. Now with the extra budget bill passed, around $17.6 billion will be used for the fourth round of COVID-19 emergency relief. The government plans to distribute relief funds within this month. Hong Yu, Arirang News. The next round of relief payments are expected to start before the month is out, with bigger amounts going to the businesses hit hardest. One adjustment made to the bill, as Hong Yu said, was to give more help to people in the farming and fishing industries. For the hardest hit small businesses, the payments will be worth more than $2,000 each. Om ji has more. The South Korean government has made some adjustments to its fourth round of COVID-19 emergency relief funds. One of the adjustments from the initial proposal is to distribute vouchers to people working in the farms and fisheries industries. This includes distributing $880 worth of vouchers to around 32,000 households of people working in those industries whose sales dropped due to the pandemic. To around 460,000 owners of smaller farms and fisheries, about $260 worth of vouchers will be given. The exact use of the vouchers is currently under discussion, but is likely to support buying goods related to the farms and fishery businesses. But the biggest change made was the amount set aside to support small business owners left reeling from the pandemic, which increased by more than $900 million. This fourth round of COVID-19 emergency relief payments will be broader and deeper in supporting small business owners. The eligibility has been expanded to include small businesses with five employees and more. It also includes businesses with sales of up to 1 billion won. For small business owners who saw a more than 60 percent drop, including those in the travel industry, will be given about $2,600.
Also, small business owners, including concert organizers, who suffered a 40 to 60 percent decrease in sales, will receive about $2,200. Those who had a 20 to 40 percent fall in sales, including chartered bus businesses, will get $1,760. Others that experienced drops in sales will be given around $880. Up to $4,400 will be given to businesses that had to reduce their operating hours because of the strength in social distancing measures. The government will also support the re-employment of around 10,000 trainers working at gyms. The amount allotted to socially vulnerable people also rose by $109 million. The plan includes giving out about $880 to non-permanent workers and certain freelancers and around $600 to taxi drivers. Om Jiang, Arirang News. According to a wide-ranging survey, more than one-fifth of South Koreans said last year that they felt socially isolated. And the data on demographics indicate that South Korea's population will start to shrink from 2028. Panji has the details. New data shows one out of five Koreans feel lonely, and just six out of ten people say they're satisfied with their life. According to a social indicators report released by Statistics Korea on Thursday, about 62 percent of the population said last year that they were satisfied with their life. But 22.3 percent of the population said they feel socially isolated, up 1.8 percent point compared to the previous year, and the highest figure since 2016. Those with a monthly income of less than 3,500 U.S. dollars tended to feel more isolated. More than half of those with a monthly income of less than 900 U.S. dollars said they felt lonely. The data also shows that 6 out of 10 people say it is difficult to accept homosexuality. About 47 percent of those aged between 19 and 29 found it difficult to accept homosexuality, and more than 64 percent of those aged 60 or older found it difficult to accept homosexuality. Seven out of ten people said they find it hard to accept those with criminal records. The report also showed that South Korea's population reached 51.78 million last year. The population is forecast to reach a peak of 51.94 million in 2028, before falling from then on. The country's fertility rate was 0.84, setting a record low for the fourth consecutive year. The average living space per person in 2019 was 29.2 square meters. But that figure was lower for the capital region. Peunji, Arirang News. New rules take effect today in South Korea on cryptocurrencies to prevent money laundering and other illegal activity. Businesses that deal in cryptocurrencies, like exchanges, will have a much bigger burden in terms of verifying their customers' identity and reporting transaction data to the financial authorities. Kim Sung-min reports. Starting from Thursday, new regulations to bring cryptocurrencies under a legal framework will take effect in South Korea. The reporting and using specified financial transaction information law aims to prevent money laundering and other illegal activities in the cryptocurrency market. The law applies to the virtual as a service providers such as Bitthumb and Upbit, not individual investors. It includes all cryptocurrency exchange operators that are engaged in the buying and selling, exchange and safekeeping of virtual assets. Businesses are required to report to the Financial Intelligence Unit, the country's anti-money laundering agency. They are also subject to anti-money laundering requirements such as verifying customers' identities and filing reports on suspicious transactions. Assets that have high risk of money laundering, like dark coins, which don't show their full transaction records, will be banned. Also coming into effect on the 25th is the Financial Consumer Protection Act. The law aims to expand the rights of consumers while making finance companies more responsible for the sales of financial products. It makes it easier for consumers to cancel investment, loan and insurance contracts without financial penalties. Financial product sellers are subject to stricter regulations related to suitability, appropriateness, product descriptions, fair business practices, reasonable recommendations, and advertisements. For example, when a seller is accused of causing damage by violating product description rules, the responsibility for proof in compensation cases has been shifted to the sellers. Kim Sung-min, Arirang News.
Time now for an in-depth look at the market news this afternoon. And for that, I'm joined on the line by Dr. Kim Sewan, Professor of Economics at Ewa Women's University. Professor Kim, good afternoon. Thank you for coming on. Good afternoon, Devin. Well, a remarkable situation right now at the Suez Canal in Egypt, where a massive ship has gotten stuck sideways in the canal for a second day now, blocking other ships from getting through. Suez, of course, is so important to international trade. So tell us about what the effect will be on global trade the longer it is until the ship is out of there. Uh, Suez Canal is uh, blocked by a huge container ship, and it causes huge traffic jam around the canal. Uh, as of now, more than 100 ships that carry oil, uh, computer chips, and so on are waiting uh, uh, to transit the canal. Uh, actually, as you said, uh, Devin, uh, Suez Canal is one of the world's busiest uh, shipping arteries, which covers about 30 percent of uh, global container uh, transportation. So this blocking oil traffic in Suez Canal can cause a serious problem in global trading if it continues for another week. Uh, then it could be a significant factor that holds back uh, global economic recovery uh, driven by rapid increase in trading. Yes, and there have been reports saying that it could be about a week, uh, maybe more before they do get it free. Now, uh, the blocking of the canal has sent oil prices higher in the past couple of days. Uh, it could hit shipping costs, too, of course. What's happening with oil, both with, with respect to the ship and otherwise? In yesterday's oil market, uh, Western Texas Intermediate increased by 5.4% uh, up to $60.85 uh, per barrel. Uh, this oil price increase is much affected by Suez Canal uh, blocking, of course. Uh, particularly, there is a worry about oil shipments from Middle East to, uh, to Europe, and this blockage in Suez uh, Canal would likely result in delays and extra costs in shipping oil. Uh, so Suez blocking can lift up uh, uh, oil price temporarily. And now uh, looking at the market, stocks on Wall Street were down uh, a bit overnight. They'd started out higher as the Fed Chair uh, Jerome Powell and Treasury Secretary Yellen testified to Congress over a Zoom call. But in the end, uh, the decline was led by tech, including a big hit to Tesla for a drop of 2% on the Nasdaq. What's the story in the global markets? Belgian Industrial had a barely 0% return for yesterday, but Nasdaq had a, a large drop by 2% yesterday. Uh, the decline in Nasdaq was led by uh, uh, tech stocks like Apple and Tesla, uh, which dropped more than 2% and 4% respectively. Uh, as economic recovery signs are getting stronger, uh, U.S. investors are moving to pro-cyclical stocks like banks and energies uh, from previous uh, market-leading uh, tech stocks. And despite that pronounced decline in uh, U.S. tech shares, the Korean markets were a little higher today. Uh, retail investors continuing to buy. Tell us about the local markets. Even with drops in U.S. market yesterday, domestic market is saved by uh, individual investors uh, for today. Uh, foreign investors sold stocks heavily, but, uh, but domestic individual investors uh, bought stocks. Uh, 220 billion won in Kospi and 54 billion won in Kospi. Uh, Kospi gained by 0.4 uh, percent and Kospi also gained by 0.1 percent today. And from today, Professor, a law takes effect in Korea to prevent the use of cryptocurrencies for money laundering. The crypto exchanges will have to give regulators verified data on their customers and their transactions. That's going to be a burden that some of the smaller exchanges can't handle. So what do you think the effect will be on these businesses and the crypto market in general? Well, the, the big picture of government on uh, new regulations on cr uh, cryptocurrency is about uh, making uh, cryptocurrency market more transparent. Uh, the trade in cryptocurrency is rapidly increasing, and the uh, trade size has exceeded that of Kospi and Costa in March. Uh, in these circumstances, a financial supervisory service uh, decided to implement amendment to specified financial transaction information from today. Uh, in this uh, newly regulated cryptocurrency market, 
one of the most important requirements is all cryptocurrency transactions should be carried out through commercial banks account with uh, certified identification. But most of commercial banks do not want to open an account for uh, cryptocurrency exchanges because this market is very risky and volatile. So if uh, commercial banks do not open account for cryptocurrency exchanges, it is expected that 90 exchanges out of 100 will be uh, uh, dis disappeared. So we have to pay big attention if we ha if we uh, if we have uh, any kinds of cryptocurrency. For sure, that's uh, definitely some advice uh, people will want to heed if they are involved uh, in this sector of investing. Professor, thank you so much for sharing your insights with us today. As always, thank you very much. South Korea's daily number of new coronavirus cases is still in the range where it's been for months. There have been more than 400 cases every day but one over the past week. And now the total number of cases to date is over 100,000. It's highly likely that when the government updates the prevention measures tomorrow that they'll stay as they are for another two weeks. Jang Taehyun reports. South Korea recorded 430 new cases of COVID-19 on Thursday. With it and after around 14 months since the first case, the total number of confirmed cases in South Korea has surpassed the 100,000 mark. Of the new cases Thursday, 419 were locally transmitted, 11 from overseas. This month, cluster infections have occurred at various multipurpose facilities, companies and small gatherings. And as of Thursday, 17 people connected to the SK Hawks men's handball team in Cheongju City have contracted the virus. At a meeting Thursday, South Korea's second vice health minister, Kang do tae said the country has been seeing around 300 to 400 new cases every day for over six weeks. He said the public can stop the spread, and he urged people to follow COVID-19 prevention guidelines and get tested straight away if symptoms arise. In the meantime, the government will announce Friday if there will be any revisions to their distancing measures. Health experts say that since the daily caseload is on a gradual uptrend, it's possible the measures will be extended for another couple of weeks. On Thursday, another 28,000 people got their first vaccine doses, bringing the number of inoculated people in South Korea to more than 730,000. Chang Taehyun, Arirang News. The Olympic torch relay has begun in Japan ahead of the Games in Tokyo coming up in July. The first group of runners took up the torch on Thursday in Fukushima, a region still recovering from the nuclear disaster that began 10 years ago this month. Nearly 10,000 people will carry the torch on its way to Tokyo, but because of the virus, the government is urging people watching along the way not to cheer or shout. The organizers of the Tokyo Olympics announced last week that spectators from abroad will not be allowed to attend the Games when they start on July 23rd. There's no decision yet on local fans being allowed in the stands. Japan on Wednesday had its highest number of COVID-19 cases so far in March at 420. And several European countries are extending their lockdowns or restrictions, including France and the Netherlands, as they see a spike in the number of virus cases. Kim yo sun reports. Many countries across Europe are ramping up restrictions in an effort to stem a fresh wave of COVID-19 infections, with the Netherlands extending its lockdown for another three weeks. Explaining that the restrictions will be imposed until April 20th, the Dutch government called on the public to exhort vigilance going forward. I'd like to one more time to call to adhere to the Beijing rules. We have done that before. We managed to push the third wave a bit ahead of us, and we can do that again. I am convinced that our own behavior remains the fastest way to relaxation of measures. Despite the lockdown, which includes a nighttime curfew and the closure of many public use facilities like bars and restaurants, Dutch health authorities say there has been a 16 percent increase in cases this week compared to the previous week. They added that this has led to a surge in fatalities and hospitalizations. The announcement comes amid similar decisions in other European countries such as Norway, Belgium and Iceland.
The French government also said Wednesday that the country is witnessing an accelerated spread, stressing that abiding by the government-imposed restrictions is crucial. What is at stake is to fully and strongly apply the measures that have been announced in order to give us a chance to not have to take additional measures later. It added that restrictions could be imposed for more regions that have seen a rapid surge lately. In the U.S., accumulated cases topped 30 million on Wednesday, according to figures compiled by Reuters. It said this means one out of every 11 Americans have had the virus. The country, which has the world's most COVID-19 cases, is concerned about the emergence of new variants, eased restrictions and increased travel. Kim Hyo-san, Arirang News. And that brings us to the end of this newscast. Thank you for watching.